Hello and welcome to what is most likely the final episode of this series. Our mod is complete, or at least the first version of it is complete, and we are ready to publicize our work. So in this episode, I'm going to package the mod up and post it on Nexus Mods. I guess you could have different distribution channels for your mods, but at this point in time, the Nexus Mods is the dominant platform where people share their mods. Maybe in the future we will have the Steam Workshop integration, and in that case, you might want to put your mod on Steam. But for now, if you want people to actually download and play your mod, they all have to be on Nexus Mods, pretty much. So let's just start with the packaging part. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set the version for this project to something that makes sense for me. So, I'm, so I will come here and right click on the C Sharp project, go to properties and package and package version. And let's put this to 0 0.10. I think that's, that is a value that I like. And let's make sure that this file actually saves. And after I have the package version set, I can come here to build and rebuild solution. So in the module template we used in the submodule.xml, they write the version to the submodule XML based on the version set by the Visual Studio project. So if we set the version in the C Sharp project, that will get propagated to our final submodule.xml file. So now if we go into the Banner Lord launcher and look for Artisan beer here, you can see that the version is now 0.10 which is correct. Also over here, we can make sure that our mod dependencies are correct by deselecting all of our mods, clicking artisan beer, and making sure that harmony will automatically toggle on when we have selected our mod. And if you have other dependencies besides harmony, such as UI extender, you should make sure that all the mods that you depend on turn on right here. So now we can do one final test run and see that everything is working properly. I mainly just want to see that it boots up and there aren't any obvious fails. And everything seems to be good. So I think we are ready to package this up. So to package this, I will go into my Panelord modules directory and I highly recommend you use 7-zip for the packaging because everyone who mods Panelord should already have 7-zip since it's required for Harmony and all the other base mods anyway, and using 7-zip means that you will not get any annoying problems with uh, locked DLLs or anything like that. So let me just right-click my module and add this to 7-zip archive. I will rename this file to artisan beer 172 to mark that this is for the game version 172, since 172 is my currently installed version of Bannerlord. But I also want to support 170 since that is the more common version that people use at the moment. So to quickly do builds for multiple versions of the game, I'm going to use my Bannerlord version switcher tool. And this version switcher is something I created and it you can find it on Nexus Mods as game version switcher for Steam. So this is what I use to quickly build for multiple versions of the game. Here in my Steam games library, I have multiple copies of Bannerlord, the one for 170 and also one for 171, on top of the, the main Bannerlord install directory. And these are governed by this Bannerlord version switcher program. So over here, this knows that there are two different versions ready for use. So if I just close Steam, I can use the Bannerlord version switcher to instantly swap between different versions of the game. And if I try to do just that right now, it will say that some of the files are in use. So we have to kill some programs, unfortunately, probably at least the Visual Studio. Let's try again. Okay, so now it worked. And now, just like that, I have 170 of the game. But I had to close Steam and Visual Studio, so now let me open up both of those. Well, let's start with Steam. So first thing we can do is we can try our current version that was built with 172 in the older version. 
So now we are in 170 and we have Artisan Beer and Harmony. So let's try play. And most likely this will fail since 172 and 170 are typically not very compatible with each other. And we get application has faced a problem. So we know that if we want to support 170 and 172, we will need to do at least two separate packages, one for each mod. So let's just go into Visual Studio now and see what the issue is. And if you're lucky, the project will just build for different versions without any issues. So then you could come here and rebuild solution and you could get a binary that works with the different version right out of the gate. But that, seemed, but that is definitely not the case for this mod. So it seems like we are sort of hurting a lot. So over here, all these using statements are wrong. Over here, a bunch of using statements are wrong. And also over here, the screen manager stuff, this namespace doesn't seem to exist anymore. So we are going to have to do a bunch of menial maintenance work to support 170. So over here in our behavior, we know that these using statements were good previously, but not right now Visual Studio is telling us that no, these are not the right ones. So let's group all of these together and let's write a preprocessor condition over these wrong using statements. So I will write pound if, and this is a preprocessor if statement. And over here we can come up with our own condition. So let's say this will be let's call this condition like Vanalord172 and over here I can end this preprocessor if statement. So right now these using statements are disabled and we get rid of the compiler errors and if at any point we want to re-enable those we can come to our properties, go to build and conditional compilation symbols and write over here our variable Lord 172 and with this conditional compilation symbol enabled these using statements will come back. Right now let's try to make this project build under version 170. So let's go over everything we need. So we need campaign system sandbox and I guess that's the only one that's sort of surprising maybe. But since we did not need this one with 172, let me write this as else and put these and put this new using statement only if we don't have this variable defined. So right now, depending on if we have this variable, we will get either these namespaces or just this one. And I think with only that one, this file now builds if I'm not mistaken. So that seems pretty good. And let's go on to the next one. And over there, we will repeat this process of adding these preprocessor conditional compilation steps. Let's go to mission view. And over here, we are missing reference to mobile party. So let's first of all, remove unnecessary using statement and put this campaign system party into a conditional compilation and else we will probably have to import something something else which is campaign tail worlds campaign system so let's put the tail worlds campaign system into this else into the else branch of this condition so right now it seems like this file is also compiling let's go on to workshop patch next over here we seem to have a lot of unused using statements, so let me clear those. And again, I think we want to wrap this in this condition. And put all the new stuff in this else branch. And I guess it's only this one again. So I think what they have done is like split this one into multiple namespaces for 172. Who knows why, but all we have to do is make our project compile. And I think we have only one file left. And that is the artisan workshop management. 
So let's come right over and repeat this process one final time. Copy the condition, wrap this in the condition, else, and then see what we need. We need at least the campaign system once more, and we need something that gives us screen base, which will be Railworld's engine screens. And I guess that is everything. Right. So now we don't have any compilation errors anymore and we can try rebuilding the solution. And it builds, so let's just try running it. See if see if it will work. The one thing we should not do right now is continue our previous campaign because that, that save game is with 172 and it would not work with 170. So instead, let's start a new sandbox. So let's click cancel and go into sandbox and create a new game. And immediately as we try to start our campaign, we get one null reference exception from our workshop production efficiency. This is because our instance is null over here. So I think this is actually a bug that would happen also on 172, but I just never started a new campaign after adding this code. So this is actually interesting to me because I would have thought that this on session launched where we set the instance would be triggered when we start a new game. And so this was actually a good thing that we encountered this at this point, because it would be very embarrassing if we always crashed when you start a new game. So right now, the workshop production efficiency is hit and multiple times. And then the on-session launch happens afterwards. So that is definitely not ideal. I think the change we want to do is we want to move this instance setting earlier. So let's try to write a constructor for this thing, where the only thing we do is set the instance. And let's see if that fixes. So now we got into the character creation. So things seem to be working at least a bit better. So we got into the game. And we can go check the inventory. We have our artisan beer item. We can save without issues. Let's go help this party. We have our UI. We can heal. We have the sound effect. We have the artisan brewer NPC. <laughs> We can talk to them. If we buy a brewery, we will get the UI over here. We can manage this. Let's wait for a day. We have the UI over here. Everything seems to be working. Okay, I think this is enough. So the 170 version of the game seems to be working fine with the changes we made. So let's go right ahead and package this. So let's go into our game modules and create a new archive for the 170 version. And this 172 version we will have to redo because we fixed a bug. So let me delete the old version. But before we do the 172, let me close all let me close this once more and let me switch to 171. And there's a good chance that the 170 version will also work with 171. Because those two are not too dissimilar. So let me try out this right now. So now we are at 171. And we have our mod built with 170. So let's try continue and see if that works. It says that the versions are different. 
that going from 170 to 171 should work. And we get into the game. We have the item. I don't see why this would not work. If we go fight, everything seems fine over here. So I think this would just work for 171. So we can say that the same packet will work with these two versions of the game. So right now, I just need to go back to 172. Let me close Steam once more, switch to 172. Switch to 172, just like that. Reopen Steam. And reopen our project. And now, when we come to 172, you will see, again, ton of compilation errors. But if we have done our conditional compilation properly, I should be able to just come here, type analog172 and all these compilation errors should go away. And now I can just rebuild. And let's launch with 172 once more and see that we can start a new game. So let's go sandbox and create a new campaign and very quickly test this for 172 again. And everything seems to be in working order, so this is good. So this will be finally our 172 packet. Okay, so now we are ready to create a new mod on Nexus Mod, since we have the mod files. So let's go to Nexus Mods and upload a mod. And this will be a gameplay mod, and I will call this Artisan Beer. Since I have small hope that in the future there might be, there will be an Artisan Workshop mod that will add all the other workshops beside just breweries. So we will reserve the artisan workshop for that potential future mod and call this just artisan beer. The model language is English. The current version is one one the current version is zero one zero. Author name me. Then I need to write brief overview and the detailed description. So I will not bother you with this, but I will just write something here. Okay, I think the description now looks good. We have our short description, which is make brewery, which is make brewery workshops more interesting by adding a high quality beer item that functions as a healing potion in combat. Then we have the longer description with or with lists of our features and a small introduction to why this mod is relevant. And I also have links to this tutorial series. At the bottom, I also include my GitHub link and the links to the assets that we used. Although you can also put the attributions to the Nexus mod UI later, I think I will just put them in both places. And this is not adult content for classification, I think this is single player content. Next up we need some images. For the banner, I think I will just use this uh, brewery management title that we have in our management screen. The banner is not the most important uh, image anyway, but I think that will look fine. And then for the images, we want to have at least one image that looks decent as a thumbnail. Like the thumbnail game in Nexus Mods is not quite as advanced as, for example, um, on YouTube. So you can pretty much go with whatever, but I think I still want to try to get a good shot for the thumbnail. I kind of like this shot I got for one of the YouTube thumbnails of the Ivy Brewer drinking. I think I will just reuse this as the thumbnail for the Nexus mods. Let's just call this Thumbo. And I won't bother to do any, any more editing on this image. But then we need some gameplay images. I'm ready with my images. So let's add some of them here. And let's rearrange this a bit, like so, maybe. So for videos, I already added videos to the description, but I guess it won't hurt to add them here as well. So let's project intro. Let's do one more, maybe. Well, let's do one more. Why not? Okay, that looks good. We don't need README. We have one in the GitHub. And for the first version, we don't have a changelog, but we can just write initial release. 
and then the permissions so this per this so the permissions the default ones seem fine but for the distribution settings i want to make this more permitting so i want to allow people to do whatever they want they can earn donation points they can use the assets they don't need to credit me anything like that and over here is the part where we are supposed to write the attribution so let's do that again although we already wrote it into the description but it cannot hurt to attribute multiple times and for the required mods here we type harmony and this does not require anything else so that's good finally we get to the point where we are to upload the files so let's call the, the so the file names will be just artisan beer the file version for both of my packages will be 010 this is the latest version these are my these are main files and in file description let's write for 170 and 171 I will set this as the main vortex file because right now there is still way more people who play on one on 170 so it makes sense for that to be the main vortex file in the modules let's come here and pick up the 170 package and save file and now i need to repeat this for the for the 172 release and this will not be the main vortex file and let's attach the file just like so and save file so now we have our two packages uploaded and ready so we should be ready to publish so we should be ready to publish the mod and let's go and let's go ahead and do just that so just like that we are done and our mod has been published so the next thing i might do is i might write something to the posts as a sticky something like what they have here for banner kings so it i think it's nice to have this sort of friendly message here with some more links and some more information so i might copy this but i won't do it right now maybe soon and of course you can also post links to your mod to your social media channels or forums and stuff like that i will also since this was tutorial i will also now finally make a post on the tail world's forums just telling people that hey tutorial like this exists but now this marks the end of this series and i want to thank you so much for watching it was quite a journey but in the end i'm really happy with how the mod turned out and i think there is at least some valuable information in the videos as well so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in my next projects as well